Mr. Crispin here once again, and my compliments of the season to all of you. In today's video, I'm going to be concluding the little series I did on turning a conical feature, and uh, I'm going to be concluding it by uh, measuring the component and showing a few ideas I've got on how to measure a cone's position. Now, don't worry, it's not all maths, there's still a few engineering topics in this video, uh, plus a few topics for the beginner. So we'll uh, kick off at the surface table. So to explain this, I'm going to start simply, and for the benefit of any beginners, such as Robert, who I was speaking to the other day, imagine you have to produce something like this. So it's basically a block with a 90 degree V groove in it, but the depth and position of the V has been specified as a gauge point from a corner. So you see the little pencil dot? That's the theoretical corner of the V. So how are you going to check it? So simple geometry, but the challenge here is that nothing we can actually check against lines up with what we're trying to check. We're trying to get to a point here, and even if you weren't able to produce a perfectly sharp V, um, there's still not much you can do to actually get to the bottom of it from anything. Um, so we need some extra geometry to bridge the gap. Now, I have been accused recently of using the same colour too much in my diagram, so I've taken my uh, savings and I've gone and bought a set of pens. So hopefully this improves clarity. But in this case, to bridge the gap, I'm going to use a cylinder. And this could be anything like a, an end mill shank or a dowel or a proper measuring cylinder. And what this actually gives us is um, something accurate that we can measure over, either with a big micrometer or a uh, height gauge or something. And uh, why is that helpful? Well, once you've got a circle there, um, the geometry becomes quite straightforward. We have formed a triangle, basically, that runs along the tangent, down this side, and then straight up through the middle. Uh, by the nature of it being a tangent, we've got a right angle there, and this is going to be half of whatever size V you've machined. So let's say it was a 90 degree V, got 45 degrees there. So you can calculate that out. You then measure over the whole thing and you deduct first of all the radius. So say say this is a 10 mil radius. So that's going to be 10 mil down. And you then deduct the length of the hypotenuse. Whatever that hypotenuse comes out at. And that leaves you with the dimension of the actual V depth. So um, quite straightforward really. And even more straightforward is to check the position of this V in the other axis. All you need is a um, depth micrometer or light on its side and use a height gauge. But let's say we use a depth micrometer. You're going to get a uh, size from there to there. Measured size. You simply add on the radius and those two added together gives you this dimension here. So very straightforward. Equally, if you were making a V block, there would be another good way to do it. Um, the only caveat here is when you get to the final inspection, you've lost the um, face you're measuring to with the micrometer. So um, either you use a height gauge or you use a smaller dowel, uh, perhaps like this and then you can check it with a depth micrometer. So um, there's always a way. So on to our actual conical feature and uh, here's the drawing in case you've forgotten and um, you could argue it's fairly terrible in the fact that it leaves a lot of information out. But there's enough to work with for now and um, we're basically going to take the theory of what we've just done and apply it to this. So not quite as straightforward but you will see very shortly how it all adds up. So I'm going to start by checking the simple dimensions such as diameter and overall width and obviously a micrometer would be perfectly adequate for doing both. For the interest of the beginner I'm going to show another method which is to use the surface table. Now to do it on the surface table I'm going to use a height gauge, often seen as a scribing attachment but um, for this I'm using a dial indicator, you just get a bit more of a uh, idea for what's going on. Um, I'll probably do this in a slightly unorthodox way, I'm going to try and turn this so that you can see both the uh, dial and the readout. Now angles wise the body of the indicator doesn't really matter what's important is that the stylus is um, as close to being flat as possible. 
according to the Mr. Toyo book, you've got about a 10 degree window before you start incurring um, cosine errors. And it's all simple stuff really. I'm going to zero the clock out and then I'm going to zero my uh, scale out. And uh, just one point, zeroing off a granite isn't always a good idea because you do have quite an undulated surface on a granite table. Overall very flat but you get small undulations. So I always like to take a slip gauge and just verify that um, what we're seeing is correct. So if I bring the clock back to zero, yeah, we now have 10.00 on the um, scale, that's fine. So we can proceed to check our um, component and we have a overall thickness of 20.01. And we can also do a bit of an experiment to see how parallel that is. Equally the uh, diameter can be checked using the same method. Slightly uh, different set of circumstances here. First of all we're going to put some pressure on the clock and then we're going to find the high spot. OK, just there. And having found the high spot, we're now going to zero the needle. OK, and have a look at the scale. We're on 48.99. That's fine. 48.99 and 20.01. Um, Next up, I'm going to check this angle out. So how to check the angle? Well, I'm going to uh, use a sign table. Much like a sign bar, just a bit more stable. Um, we're going to build up a slip gauge stack to take this to the complement of 36.098 and hopefully then make this face level. So this is a sign table, much like a sign bar except a little more stable and uh, also with a magnetic plate on, very handy for grinding. Um, and all we're really interested in here is that when we put our component on it that we get the same reading front to back. If we get the same reading front to back then we know our angle is correct and uh, we can use this height gauge and indicator to do that once again and checking front to back we zero out nicely there and the same so I'm very happy with that I can't really detect any error there on this clock so that's fine I can at this moment also check for axial run out so if I check front to back um, in different locations I will be able to see if I have an error and what I mean by that is if, as I go round, I detect different angles, so different front-to-back readings, then it's an indication that the centre line of the cone is actually on a different axis to the centre line of the datum face, and therefore I've got some run-out in the cone. So moving on to check the cone position, which is our final um, bit to inspect. And when I say cone position, I'm really referring to um, these dimensions. So, in other words, if the cone is in the right position, we will intersect the vertical at 8mm and we will intersect the horizontal leaving a uh, diameter of 31.5. So don't worry, I have a full diagram coming up but what I'm going to show here is the inspection method and we will then draw out the maths. You remember we had a V-block and we put a cylinder in it. Well I'm going to effectively create the same geometry here. I'm going to put the cone up against something uh, that is 90 degrees to the surface table and I'm then going to sit a dowel in this gap. Now the only thing I don't like about this method is um, the dowel does not self-align. Um, I'm going to solve that problem in this case by using an adjustable parallel which I've already set uh, so that when we have everything pushed up this sits parallel to the surface table and I can now get my indicator bring it down and check the dimension over the top of the dowel. Find the high spot of the dowel. Zero the needle. And I'm just going to do one double check here that the dowel is fairly parallel. Yeah, it's within, within half a thou. And I'm going to check it right over the centre line of the component for minimal error. So we find the high spot, make sure that's reading zero. And then we look at our um, scale on the height gauge and we've got 
0.27 millimeters. So we're going to write that number down and do our calculation. So that's what we just had. We had the component butted up to a 90 degree surface and we sat in it a dowel. The dowel in this case was 8 millimeters diameter. So if we uh, basically go through the same construction as before, we can draw in our uh, respective triangles. Now naturally, when you have a centre line, it splits the uh, angle equally and produces two tangents. So we have two identical triangles there, back to back, um, and being tangents, we have actually two 90 degree triangles. The short side is going to be the radius of the uh, diameter, so they're going to be 4 mil, 4 mil, and we said that our um, overall angle here to around here was 36.098. Now I'm going to uh, just round that up to 36.1 just for the simplicity of the demonstration. So let's say that's 36.1, and therefore these are equally going to be half of that, so um, 18.05 and this one would also be 18.05 and why do we want that? Well we're going to basically do the same as before once we've got our side of the triangle we can say we'll measure over the top and that's what we just did and we got uh, 24.27 that was our uh, overall number from that, we deduct the 4mm and we work this uh, triangle out and we get a short side of 12.27 and we add those two together, take them off that and that leaves us with 8.0 in this case and I'm slightly surprised there because that's exactly what we were aiming for um, write that in so we've got eight that's okay I'm quite surprised how accurate that's come out so that's how you would check the dimension there but what about the overall width to do this I've drawn the component out and it's quite straightforward because we already have all our sizes so let's see what we're going to work out well basically we have a triangle here triangle here and if we can solve some of these numbers um, we get our answer. Now um, we've already established this was the complement of 36.098 so 53.902 we'll call it 53.9 and overall was 20.01 this distance was 8.0 so this distance is 12.01 so the overall minus the parallel section 1201. We can now uh, use our trigonometry app or whatever you choose to use to calculate this side and that should come out at 8.758. You take your 48.99 and you minus 8.758 from one side and off the other side and it gives you a finished dimension up here of 31.5. 474 so to two decimal places 31.47 we were aiming for 31.5 so we're 30 microns small 31.47 and that concludes the drawing so uh, I'm pretty pleased with how that's all come out hopefully the method has made sense so that was my thoughts uh, if you have any other ideas or better suggestions please let me know in the comments um, I didn't go to the trouble of checking roundness, flatness, surface finish and I wouldn't know how to check how conical the cone has ended up. If anyone knows how to check cone geometry on a surface table, please let me know. Um, the one thing I'm going to show is a method for checking chamfer and break edge uh, conditions. And the method is to use a shadow graph or profile projector or microscope. I can't really think of another good way of doing it, uh, possibly with um, some calipers and a magnifying glass. Um, but uh, I work in grinding and so profile projecting is a fairly daily activity. And I've learned a lot about it from expert engineer Lee Walker. 
uh, Shadow Gas is one of his favourite topics. He's the chief engineer where I work and a good all round engineer, but particular Shadow Graph um, expert. And for his information, this is a uh, Shadow Master made by Batting, still in production, and you can get all the bits for them. So uh, we'll now move on and I'll demonstrate the projecting of a component. So I'm winding the stage up until I get the centre line of the component uh, on the same plane as the lens's focal point and that gives me a clear image on the screen then. So by manipulating the component on the stage I can look around all the corners and break edges and if I was to reverse the component I'd be able to see that one. And uh, if I was working to a specification then I could check the profile and the size was okay. Well I hope you enjoyed watching and um, that concludes this video. Now I'm going to avoid doing too many maths videos. Uh, I think the general machining videos are of more interest and the next video will be machining cylinders. Uh, we'll be finishing the piston valve bores off and a few other bits and pieces. So until then, thank you for watching and see you on the next video.